everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So we're, we have reached the uh, far right-hand edge of the very first pass across this uh, pattern. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. Figured I would reach it by the end of the month, so I think we may even get the uh, the beginning of the next pass across the pattern uh, this month. So we'll see. Yeah, so it's kind of a gloomy day today here. It's overcast and foggy, and so there's no blue sky or sun to be seen. So, yeah, I hope it's nicer where you are. At least it's not that cold. January, February is usually our coldest, but uh, so far, fingers crossed, January has been pretty mild this year. But we'll have to get through February before I can say that it's a milder winter. We did have a lot of very cold days in December, so... I'm hoping that's it for the season, but knowing our luck, probably not. Okay, 8.38. So I did say I was going to try to get my um, last piece mounted and hung up, and I did. So yeah, I think having you all watching has motivated me. <laughs> the last time I... Um, I finished a piece of cross stitch. It took me about five months to actually get around to getting the fabric and mounting it and hanging it. So knowing you guys were eager to see that was a, <laughs> a motivator. And I did make a video about it showing my process on the large piece. I already had one from last year uh, showing it on a little piece. And then this is the same basic principle, just larger. But I had a lot of people asking to see that, so so I did it, yeah. Really happy with how it turned out. Yeah, the only thing is it's kind of hard on the back because of having to bend over ironing. I was working on my um my kitchen table, so standing up and bending over. I tried to sit down when I could, but I mean, I had to reach the center of the, the table with the iron. So sometimes sitting down just wasn't practical for that. But uh, I've done them on the floor too, because um, my uh, Geisha ladies one, the uh, Oriental Triptych from uh, Heaven and Earth Designs was too, uh, was too wide to fit on my table. It was hanging off the edges, so I had to do that one on the floor. And yeah, my back really didn't like that, but but it was a nice finished product, so I was happy with it. Okay, that one, that one, that one, okay. Yeah. Quite a few here, so I gotta make sure I'm grabbing the correct thread. The grid lines are helping me with that. So I can end this one off. Yeah, so we should definitely be at 30% once we reach this far edge. I think probably beyond. Yeah. Maybe 31, we'll see. It won't be quite a third. Because, um... I go in rows, or I go in passes of 60 rows, and one of them, it's 192 uh, rows 
for this entire pattern so it doesn't exactly spit, split perfectly into three uh, into three passes so it won't be exactly a third when I reach this far edge. And then, yeah, I uh, did a video showing how I handle the large blocks of color because uh, I had some people saying they wanted to see that. So, yeah, there was a tutorial I did for that. Yeah, that was my, my seventh parking tutorial. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have made so many <laughs> when I started this uh this channel but there's just been more and more stuff to add so that's all right oh my goodness pardon me <clears throat> yeah getting back into the uh <laughs> the routine and poor kiddo's got uh midterms coming up pretty soon but then one of the nice things is uh for four out of the five days his exams are in the afternoon so we won't have to get up early those days I picked up this one. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about being careful not to pick up the wrong threads. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong one. I grabbed the very one, very top rather than the second one down. That's okay. At least I realized it before I I stitched anything incorrectly. That stitch did need to be done. So I'm going to have two threads for this. I don't want to jump back and forth. So I'm going to have one thread running down one side and then another thread going down the other side yeah I decided that fairly early on okay all right now I'll pick up this one that I thought I was picking up last time but I actually wasn't <laughs> Well, I guess you'll see a bit of bigger blocks here. There's some colors along the side here that are in bigger sections, so. Thought might, there might be a knot on the back, but there wasn't, thankfully. Okay, let's see if this goes. No, nothing close enough to park, so we will end this thread off. And I make sure I pin stitch at least five stitches from the edge so that the end doesn't accidentally extend beyond the edge of the... Uh, the finished pattern. Don't want that. Because, yeah, I made that mistake before, and then when I was finishing it, I realized I had a bunch of ends poking along the edges, and I had to go and trim them or thread them all back towards the uh, wrong side, so better to just avoid that in the first place. 791. So, yeah, a bit of a bigger section here, this color. And like I say, I don't always go row by row, so. So like, I could just do this row and then do the stitch to the right of it, but I'm gonna just continue going down the rows uh, until I get to the point where I would be closing something in if I did it, so then I stop as per my, my usual method. But generally, as long as I can go 
without boxing any unstitched squares in, that is what I do. Yeah, so the days are supposed to be getting longer, but oh, yeah, we are still in that dark, dark part of winter. I do not love it, I have to say. Yeah, and then, you know, Christmas is over, so it's just kind of blah. Although, it is my wedding anniversary this month. Yeah, it's our uh, 21st, which is just so hard to believe because um, when we first met, my, um, my husband's parents had celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary like a year or two before. And then it's like, now we're past 20 years. Like, how the heck did that happen? <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing how fast time flies. Is a knot this time. Let's see if we can. Ah, good. I was able to get it to release. Ugh. Yeah, I don't feel old enough for it to be <laughs> that long. I remember when I was a kid. You know, we were planning stuff like, you know, a few days in advance. And my dad told me, you know, when you're an adult, you start planning things years in advance. So my mind was just blown, but it's like, yeah, I get that now. <laughs> oh. This thread is really wanting to knot up on me. Yeah, I don't know why it's being like that. Okay. There's a tiny knot. Not enough for me to want to uh, cut it out, but I'm going to sort of leave a little bit of a longer carry on the back to ensure that that knot stayed on the back. Yeah, I don't know how that managed to do that. I leave slack in my grid line so it doesn't pull at the holes. So you have to be careful because sometimes when you get closer to the edge, it uh, the slack could confuse you. So yeah, because I had one time, everything seemed to be off by one row, but no, actually it was my grid line had pulled a little loose. And uh, yeah, my stitching was correct. The grid was not. So I usually avoid stitching across the grid line, but this time I'm going to put a stitch over it to kind of hold it in place where it should be. I've got sort of a big slack bit there that I can easily remove it later. But yeah, sort of across the middle of the piece, I try to avoid stitching over the grid, but at the edges, sometimes I do it on purpose just to keep things secure, squared off. Okay, so a few more rows. We may run out of thread before I run out of stitches here. We shall see. Yeah, I love the look of confetti after it's done because it gives so much detail, but yeah, stitching larger sections is satisfying because it stitches up so quickly. So you really get to see your progress. Yeah, because if I don't get this all filled in today, which is possible, as I said, there's not much confetti here. I will get it tomorrow, I should think. Oh, we got a big uh, dump truck going by with two trailers full of snow. So, yeah, they, uh, they cleared the cul-de-sac around the corner. Now they're having to haul the snow away. Yeah, we just get too much that you can't just 
shove it to the sides. It's got to be actually trucked away and dumped outside of town. Yeah, it hasn't been as cold this winter, but there's been quite a lot of snowfall. It's supposed to start up again next week. Yeah, well, fortunately we have a snowblower, so. Yeah, after, you know, five or six of these uh, prairie winters, finally, my husband just said, okay, <laughs> I'm done. We need to get a snowblower. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of a necessity out here. It was funny because I remember a coworker, you know, we were saying, oh, there's going to be another, you know, freaking, you know, eight inches of snow tonight. She said, oh, you know, that's not much. And I'm like, yeah, well, you live in a, you know, in a condo, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, so you don't have to shovel your snow. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. You have to drive in it, but you don't have to. Yeah. And they had underground parking, so... She didn't even have to worry about clearing off her car. Said so sometimes I spend more time scraping ice off my windows than I do actually driving anywhere. Because <laughs> it takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes to drive across town, generally. We're pretty lucky we don't have much of a rush hour here. Yeah, the only time it's a problem is when you get stuck behind the train. Because, um... When they were putting the train in, they didn't put in any kind of overpass or anything. And, uh, well, now it would be too expensive to do it because they would have to buy a whole bunch of buildings that are, you know, built around that intersection. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's too expensive for them to do that. So sometimes, yeah, unfortunately, when you're late, it's not stuck in traffic. It was stuck behind the dang train. Fortunately, I don't have to cross the train tracks as much anymore. I used to work across them, so yeah, some mornings it was just not good. Or I had a couple times where I was uh, later to pick up kiddo from school because I'd had to come from across the tracks and the train had blocked, blocked me, so... pretty frustrating too because a lot of times for some reason I don't know why they have to go back and forth across the intersection several times and they don't go far enough to like let the car so you're sitting there going okay it's backing out of the way okay the gates are going to lift pretty soon and then nope they reverse and go the other direction it's like oh okay so they go back the other way and you think okay maybe they'll let us out nope then they just turn and go back the other side come on guys I know you have a job to do but you know we got places to go too <laughs> I had one time they backed up and stopped but they backed up like not quite enough for it to trip the uh the gates to open so we're just sitting there finally I started leaning on my horn like you guys back up three more feet for Pete's sake you know and then they they did I guess they didn't think of it but it's like come on guys you're not actually in the intersection so yeah if you're gonna stop it stop it far enough back that the darn gates open so people can go because, yeah, sort of once you get in that gridlock, it's not like you can back up and leave. I had a couple times I was lucky enough that I was able to make sort of a right turn and go back out to the highway and back the other way. But, yeah, sometimes that's just not happening. If you're far enough back from a corner, you can't turn right. So you're just stuck there waiting. It's it bad enough sometimes you just put your vehicle in park so you don't have to sit there with your foot on the brake for 20 minutes. Ugh. Yeah, so we always say, you know, don't try to cross those tracks when you're low on gas because if you get stuck behind it, you might run out. That would really suck. People would not be happy with you. That's for sure. Okay. Oh, oh shoot. I forgot that one. Oh, did I put this in the wrong place? What did I do here? 
Oh, yeah, I put it right there. That's in the wrong spot. Ah, oh, silly me. It should have been down here. Aha. Uh -huh. That's what I get for talking while stitching, hey? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I did that wrong. In the wrong corner. So very carefully. Just cut that one, th those threads and nobody, none other. None of the other ones. Come on. Oh, I think the points of these scissors are getting kind of dull. Okay, I'm going to see if I can pull this from the other side. No. Okay. I'll tell you, when you want to remove a stitch, it's just not happening. I suppose it's so close in color. I could have just left it, but ah. I finally got it cut, so <laughs> I guess I won't be doing that. Okay. I'll use my snag tool to just kind of, yeah. From the other side, I'm not exactly sure which thread to pull, and I don't want to pull the wrong one, so let's just let take a few tries to sort of get that to go back. Come on, stop being a pest. Oh, would you just... There, okay, I think we got it now. Okay, silly me, let's try that again. 3807, yeah. This one here, yeah. That's what I get when I don't double check with my uh, <laughs> my grid lines. I make mistakes. But at least with the grid lines, I find it easier to figure out where I went wrong when it does happen. Okay, because yeah, when I went to pick up this one here, there was an empty gap above it, which there shouldn't be if I had done it correctly. So there, all fixed. So thank you guys for all your feedback. It's been really helpful. It's nice knowing you guys don't mind the bigger blocks of color. Uh, so that, uh, that helps. Uh, 38.37. And let's see how far it goes. Okay, not far.
I'm not really sure what this bit I'm stitching here is from the mock-up. I don't know. It might be one of the legs of one of the guardians. The four ones who hold up the moon at the end of the game. Yeah, um, I think it was the Luigi Brothers said based on Link's height, which they figured out in Ocarina of Time um, from the... Uh, the measuring thing in the um, the Zora house uh, that the uh, the big giants at the end who hold up the moon in Majora's Mask are like 80 meters tall or something. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I was curious one time because I tried um, doing the the calling oath at the end, the oath to order or whatever it was. Um, when I only had three of the four giants uh, released, just to see what happened. Yeah, the moon still falls. <laughs> Get the, you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Somebody uh, captioned when I shared this on my page. <laughs> Sarah, Legend of Zelda fan too. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I think I'm only going to get a couple more stitches and then I'm going to start a new strand for this bit. What I may actually do is go back up to the top for a bit and work some other colors. Work my way down. So yeah, I could decide to just keep carrying all the way down along this this uh, diagonal towards the bottom or I could come to the top and work down a bit more too. Just depends on my mood, I suppose. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, it was funny, I liked in this game, you could play on the ocarina and um, somebody discovered that like, if you press a note and you move the directional stick up, it goes up a semitone. And if you go down, it goes down a semitone. So that gives you a few more notes. And uh, I actually found some online that showed you how to play certain songs. Of course, it's limited because there's only a certain number of notes, not a full scale worth. Oh, and I think if you pressed the R and the Z buttons, it also distorted the sound. So you got a couple other notes that way. But... Um, I actually learned how to play the the uh, village theme on it, so that was kind of fun. From the uh, from the Ocarina of Time, the Kakairo or Kakirko, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But yeah, the village at the base of the uh, Death Fountain. You can play the theme on the Ocarina. Actually, it was kind of cool. I saw online you can buy people have made ocarinas that look like the uh, Ocarina of Time. So that's pretty cool. I kind of wanted one, but they were expensive, so I didn't bother. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it's funny when I played it, I always actually named my file Link so that uh so that all the characters actually call him Link because of course it uses your file name in the game. So Yeah, it was funny because um, we played uh, Ocarina of Time with, uh, well, my son got to watch it well when he was like six or seven. So then uh, later he found a pirate sword and stuck it down the back of his shirt and said, I'm Link. <laughs> and it was a green shirt he was wearing. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Or he liked to draw different snowman characters. So he made a snowman Link using a key to open a chest. So yeah, it was like a snowman with stick arms, but then it had like his green hat and his shield and stuff. So yeah, it was pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, he's a gamer just like his parents. <laughs> Twenty nine point nine three percent. Yeah, I think we will probably hit thirty percent during this session because that won't take much. I think that's like um, about thirty stitches, forty stitches, something like that. I'd have to actually sit and do the math. I'm just guesstimating because I'm not great at mental math. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really like the fact that we um because of smartphones, we always have a calculator available now because uh, I don't trust my mental math, even for simple stuff. Yeah, or my problem is if I'm ha it has 
more than two steps, by the time I figured out the second set of numbers, the first set of numbers is gone from my brain. Yeah. Like, that's a problem. I can do it, but by the time I, yeah. When you're multiplying, like, say, two-digit numbers, by the time I do the, the second digit, the first digit has gone. And then if I go back to do the first digit math again, then the second digit is gone now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I suspect I have a dyscalculia, which is like a problem with numbers mentally. And it's like, okay, because, yeah, somebody said it's kind of like if you're trying to write numbers on sand and they just start slowly filling in as soon as you write them. So your brain can't hold on to it. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's the perfect explanation or description of how it happens in my brain. I just can't hold it into my head. So even when I do mental math, I still like to um, to double check with a calculator because I don't trust myself. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I was made to take uh, math 12 and calculus in my senior year of high school. And... Uh, Oops, I'll drop my needle. I'll have to go with a magnet to find that later. But um, anyway, like I did really well in math 11, but math 12 was like, you know, if each grade was a step, math 12 was like a staircase <laughs> uh, above that. But everyone said, oh, no, no, you, you know, you did well in math 11. You'll be fine. No, I was so lost. And people didn't understand because... I'm someone who tests very well. I'm really good at memorizing and then repeating it, even if I don't actually understand the material. So people thought, well, you know, you got an A, you must understand it. It's like, no, I'm just good at sort of following by rote, even if I don't actually understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So... Yeah, one of my hobbies for a long time. I still do it, but not as much, was, uh, is knitting. And I said, if I'd known how much ruddy math was in that <laughs> hobby, maybe I wouldn't have taken it up. Because, yeah, you know, knitting your gauge has got to be correct if you want your garments to fit. Because, yeah, if the uh, pattern calls for four stitches per inch and you knit at five stitches per inch, your garment is going to be many many inches smaller or conversely uh, if you do three stitches per inch it's going to be huge it makes a huge difference in uh so i often will actually customize the pattern to work with what tension i stitch with rather than trying to change my tension even with different needles it's just it's difficult so yeah so i actually designed a lot of my own stuff i had people say i should sell the pattern but the problem was then i would have to figure out other sizes and i just yeah my non-math brain was like no that's i don't want to do that so uh. yeah but i find i get um I get pain in my hands when I knit. Not so much when I cross stitch. I'm wondering if because knitting is like heavier and uh, so you have to apply more force with your fingers, right? Because uh, moving yarn around and, you know, holding needles up and holding the weight of whatever you're knitting up. I mean, you can rest it on your lap, but some points, some parts of it, you can't. And uh, yeah. I like to try and knit things in one piece when I can too. So it's great for not having seams because I hate sewing it together later. Especially when you're having to, um, like say with set in sleeves, you don't go one row per row. You have to kind of adjust it so that you don't end up with the, uh, because you don't have as many stitches for say the arm sleeve cap as you do for what goes around the rows for uh, the armholes. So. Yeah, but actually I have um, 
Barbara G. Walker's Knitting from the Top Down, which showed how you could actually make a sweater with set-in sleeves in one piece, but it takes a fair amount of math, so yeah. But sort of once I figured it out for my basic, for my measurements, then I could just, you know, use the same basic pattern and just change a few things like adding a cable, you know, down the front or whatever, a different pattern along the sides or whatever I wanted. So yeah. Oh, whoops. I meant to come up here. Yeah, and then there's the fun too of um depending on what fibers you work with, they can change from what you knit them, like cotton will shrink vertically, generally. So you have to adjust. I found it shrinks about 25% from what you originally knit it. So you have to knit it like 25% longer and then it changes shape, which of course means then more math. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so on this one here, right? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to park and do fill in some here to the left a bit because as you can see I'm going to want to come down here and do the lone stitches around that edge there so that I don't need to use a separate piece of thread or close anything in so although this thread's going to run out pretty soon anyway so we'll see I guess with blankets, there's a little, knitting blankets, there's a little more uh, wiggle room. But yeah, knitting garments, there isn't if you want them to fit properly. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fill in some of this here. So this was the one I said I could have continued with this color, but I went up to the top and... Now I'm going to continue with this color and then probably come back up again. So just kind of rise and fall along that diagonal edge sometimes. So I'm going to do this one. Try and move it there. And then I'm going to do, I think, the next three rows because I want to be able to do all those sort of half filled in circle stitches at once. You, if you've uh, watched me before, you probably know what I mean, what I'm gonna do. So. carry on. So I'll do these nine. So I could keep doing more rows with this color as it's going to be a while till I have to worry about closing anything in there, but I feel like switching colors now, so I will. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do this color. Yeah, and we are past 30%. So yeah, I think we're going to be at under 32%, but about 31% by the time I've finished filling all this in and I'm ready to start the next pass across this pattern. park that below Let's get back up here to the top so this is why I did filled in that to the left of it because I wanted to be able to do this shape here and not not close anything in thread will be just long enough to do the stitches that I've highlighted. Not enough for this row below, so we're gonna tie off this thread. That one is a little more visible than I'd like it. So I think this is a lighter color here. Yeah, I don't want to risk this showing. Yeah, this is kind of There. there. I did it a little too far to make it a little shorter so that it really disappears into the fabric like that. Then when it's covered up, you will not see it. Okay, so switch colors again. 798. Okay, we'll need a new. right this is a lighter color over those pin stitches so I had to make sure that it really disappeared into the fabric if it was really light like a white I would not pin stitch it there at all but this is a sort of medium dark color so it'll be enough to cover them up as long as they've properly disappeared into the fabric okay so, I'm going to add this color again. Let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a full length piece, and instead of starting from the right hand edge in, I'm going to go from the left side out so that it's less far to carry it and park. In the next stitch down to the left. I was checking to see if I had a shorter piece that would be enough for just the four, but no. The pieces I have are too short. They're enough for like one stitch and not four.
So yeah, this isn't quite a tutorial video, but you can see again how I'm managing bigger blocks of color, still avoiding closing stuff in. But yeah, this, this part zips by pretty quick. Buster, oh, that's enough, honey. She's chattering her teeth at me. Look, it's not veggie time yet. She just had some less than an hour ago. <laughs> she doesn't like to uh, squeak at me anymore. I think it's more too much effort because she's old. <laughs> and uh, yeah, grinding her teeth at me is easier. <laughs> uh yeah, you can kind of hear her sometimes trying to squeak and it just comes out as this like sound instead of a squeak. <clears throat> mm -mm. Cuz young guinea pigs, they really make a weak, loud squeak squeaking sound when they want something. She still purrs though, so that's nice. Yeah, especially when you give her a treat. We say it's her way of saying thank you. <laughs> it's funny though, because uh, sometimes if you get up in the middle of the night to have a drink of water or something, she knows it's not time to be fed, but she's hopeful that it is. So she makes really, really quiet little <laughs> sounds. <laughs> Not full on squeaks. Yeah. But it's like, well, you're up. So while you're up, do you mind feeding me? <laughs> it's like, well, you're not going to go hungry. There's always plenty of hay and uh, pellets in her in her cage. So, because that's what's supposed to be the majority of their diet. <clears throat> <coughs> Pardon me. They would eat um, just fresh veg all day, but it's not good for them. They need the roughage. For their uh not just for their digestion but also for their teeth because their teeth continuously grow throughout their lives because they're rodents so like hamsters and such yeah they need to eat hay and stuff to keep those teeth worn down or they'll grow too long and cause them problems yeah one of my um husband's sisters had a really lazy guinea pig and he wouldn't eat enough hay and his teeth would get so long she'd have to take him to the vet to get them clipped. Ooh, just the idea, you know, of clippers on teeth is just ooh, a shudder. Yeah. 
because yeah otherwise they'd actually grow and possibly pierce through their their lips and stuff and yeah so that would would not be good So, I mean, I guess one good thing about, you know, regenerating teeth like that, you don't have to worry about losing them, but then, yeah, if they're always growing, then you have to keep wearing them down, so there's that. Okay. Yeah, these big blocks means we've been able to do over 200 stitches in this hour. That's always nice. It's nice we got all that done today. Yeah, that is one, one thing to love about the big sections of color. You can really see the progress you're making. Although I do like with parking, even in confetti, because there's no missed stitches. Yeah, you can tell that when you reach the bottom of the square, you've done the entire square. Okay, so how about we make this an even 200 stitches before we take a break? You know me, I like my even numbers. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be done this before you know it. Because, yeah. Less than two months to reach a, uh, almost a third done. So there we go. 200 even. Awesome. So, um, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you here again next time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.